Hello, and welcome to Episode 6 of Becoming Bob. I'm Alex, and of course today we'll be following along with Episode 6 of The Joy of Painting. Follow the link there from the card. Starting out with a black canvas on this, I had painted that with black gesso and allowed it to completely dry. I then put on a layer that was a mixture of Van Dyke Brown and Prussian Blue, which I mixed with a little bit of linseed oil to help the colors blend a little bit better. Kind of made it into a liquid brown and blue mixture, if you will. Then with my one inch brush, as you saw, I went in with some white, made some crisscrosses and put some moonlight up in the sky there. Now going in with my two inch blender brush to put in some crisscrosses and help smooth that out even more. A little back and forth action there. And now switching out for my one inch brush again, mixing in a little bit of liquid white with some titanium white. And I'm going to go right in there into the center of the highlight area and twist in the paint right into the canvas. I'm going to put in a little moon and cut off the excess paint with my knife. Now I kind of cut more than I was expecting there and I was a little worried, but once I got my two inch blender out, really kind of took care of that. Um, sharp edge there. Now with a nice dark blue and brown mixture I'm going in with my fan brush and putting in some nice dark clouds in front of the moon. Some nice wispy ones. And now I'm mixing up highlight color there using that same tone mixed with some titanium white. And the highlights there on the top of the cloud. Which adding highlights to these clouds just really adds so much depth to them and makes them pop and really gives them a much more 3D effect. It makes them look like actual clouds and not just the shadow of a cloud in front of the moon. And now blending those highlights in. You can see the highlights on the clouds that are above the moon. I put those on the bottom of the clouds. They kind of match the way the light would be coming off the light source. And now with my knife, I'm mixing up a nice dark tone. And go in with a nice big mountain peak. And you can see as I'm putting this in, I'm wiggling the knife a little bit to kind of try and give it a more organic shape. In the future, I don't think I'm going to try and do this with the dark undertone. I feel like maybe going in with a more defined edge would look a little bit better for the shadow portions, at least, of these mountains. Um, there's a lot of experimenting you have to do with this uh, technique. And now, going in with the white to add some snowy highlights. Let's see again I am using the kind of wiggly technique here but I feel like that does work for the highlights but for the dark areas it just doesn't do it um, as well for me. Now with a slightly darker tone adding in some shadow areas. Because this painting is lit by moonlight there's a lot less contrast than you'd see if it were a daylight painting. So the light and the dark areas on the mountain just uh, not quite as not quite as um, different from one another. Now blending things out again with my two inch brush. And speaking of two inch brush, I've uh, found this website, twoinchbrush.com. It's an amazing community of Bob Ross fans such as myself. Um, you can see other fans work as they've painted along with Bob. Um, you get to hear their experiences and uh, share your own. And um, it really is a great resource. There's, uh, I've posted my pictures on there and there's been a few of those users which have come over and checked out my channel and I just really appreciate everything they're doing and um, I think it's great to be a part of that community. So uh, check it out, 2inchbrush.com. Some dark areas there with my one inch brush and now going in to add in some highlights. And As I'm adding these highlights I'm trying to make each little highlight kind of look like an individual tree so that it looks like a stand of trees and not just a snowy blob off in the distance. 
Now one of my favorite parts, adding those reflections. Just pulling straight down with that two inch brush. You can see I'm trying to avoid doing it all in one straight line horizontally across. Um, that way it kind of has more of a natural bank look to it when I go in here to add the bank in a second. Which I am now adding that bank. Putting some snow on there with my knife. Trying to give it a drifting effect and like I said try and make the edge of the water line look a little bit more natural and not just straight across. And that's definitely my tendency to make it straight across, especially when I'm cutting the edge in like that. And now going in and cutting in some sticks and logs there. And with the fan brush in a nice dark color, I'm going back in to add in some pine trees. This is one thing that I really have to work more on. Um, these trees still are coming out fatter and more squat than I'd like them to. I'm getting better, but um, I still have a long way to go on these. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm not practicing any of this painting off camera. Um, you're literally seeing every uh, second of my uh, painting experience here on this channel. And so um, don't expect to see a whole lot of uh, <laughs> advancement between paintings on any of these techniques but I know with time and the more paintings I do the better I'm going to get because that's just how practice works. Now back in with my one inch brush. Got kind of a lighter shadow color there. Let's bring in some foliage in the front. You can see I've kind of created two little peninsulas there and defined where the water is going to be coming up into the foreground. Now, adding in some snowy highlights. Adding some highlights in on the bottom there. And the bottom part is about to become reflection. Switching out for that two inch brush now and pulling straight down. The brush kind of picked up a lot of paint here, and when I go back into Pull it across horizontally to kind of give it that watery ripple. Um, you'll see I kind of deposit a line of it right there. And yeah, that was one thing that as I was painting, I had to remind myself, no mistakes, just happy accidents. Um, you can see there it's still kind of standing out and it was just one of those things that as I was doing this, I had to really focus on putting the snow in and try to uh, avoid looking at that. What I was thinking in my head was just total flaw. But you just gotta have some trust in Bob and trust in the technique and know that, you know, in the end it's all gonna turn out pretty good. Just getting in those sticks and twigs again. Trying to make them look as organic and realistic as possible. And then mixing up some more highlight color. And going in on the left side of the painting. Trying to create those individual plants. And now adding in some big snowy drifts there on the left side. Trying to put enough paint on the canvas that it is a nice snowy drift, but not put so much on there that it's just a big mess. Also, uh, by this point in the painting, I'm several minutes behind Bob, so I do know what's coming next. And I know that I'm going to be putting other things on here, so I didn't want to have too much paint to have to scrape off. If you watch a lot of Bob Ross, you know, when you go in with your knife and start scraping off in that shape, that means you're about to put in a cabin. Scraping it off does two things. It makes it easier to put more paint on the canvas now. Uh, I'm adding that Van Dyke brown. And it also kind of lets you block out the shape some and get some of the um, angles right, uh, get some of the perspective right before you actually put all the paint on. I put a lot of paint on that cabin. Uh, it was more like icing a cake than building a cabin. And at this point, that was just looking like a big mess to me, especially being right up on it. Um, 
but uh, you know you just kind of have to keep keep working with it and just know that it's going to turn out fine in the end. So going in with the knife and cutting in a door, cutting in the edge of the roof, corners of the building, cutting in some boards there to make it look like it's nice and old and wooden and you know once I had done that the definition those lines added into the cabin really um, took care of uh, the issues I had with it. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Still have a long way to go with my cabins. Um, I know that they're definitely not my strong suit at this point but you know that's that's part of the journey. Mixing up some more of that shadow color for some foliage there in front. You can see it's really having a hard time getting that paint to stick just because there's so much on there at this point from the snow. And adding in a few highlights now. Now mixing up some highlights on the fan brush and adding those into the evergreen trees. And that's more or less the last touch I'll be adding to the painting. Um, so thanks for watching. This has been episode six of Becoming Bob. Um, if you'd like to see uh, the previous episodes, here's a link to episode five. Um, I'm really excited to get a chance to do this. I never would have gotten here if it wasn't for my Indiegogo uh, supporters. So as always, thank you so much uh, to any of you out there who supported me in that campaign. Uh, it just means so much to me. And uh, thanks to the folks over at TwoInchBrush.com. I'm glad I came across your site. and um, It's just great to have such a good community out there. So, as I sign my painting here, thanks again for watching, and have a great day.